Hello, hello. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are reaching us from. My name is Sanyef Yokakwan, an evangelist and the minister working with the Campus Church of Christ, Rema Christian Academy, Uroatan, Uroanam local government area of Kwaibum State, Nigeria. By God's special grace, I am the anchor man for the official kickoff of our seven day World English Institute International Digital Evangelism for Africa lectureship tonight. The host of this event is the Campus Church of Christ, Rema Christian Academy, Rotong, Nigeria. The theme of this program is Restoring the Evangelism Prowess of the early Christians using the 21st century digital technology. The theme analysis of this event is to be analyzed by the host minister of the campus church here at Rotong, myself, and Yefyok Akwan. The aim of International Digital Evangelism for Africa, abbreviated as IDEA, IDEA is to mobilize faithful gospel preachers worldwide for effective universal evangelism using digital technology. The aim of this lectureship is threefold. One, to persuade unbelievers to come to Jesus, who is the only savior of the world, and to encourage Christians worldwide to remain faithful amidst economic crisis, security threats, persecutions, and other adversities. Two, to encourage and strengthen gospel preachers and missionaries in different mission fields across the world. Three, to invite more faithful Christians to join the laborers in God's different fields across the world that are ripe unto harvest but suffer shortage of workers. We thank the Almighty God for the grace to host the maiden edition of our dig digital lectureship. On behalf of all the members of the Campus Church of Christ here in Urotong, we welcome all the participants who have gathered here at the RCA campus for the physical lectureship and other participants who have joined us online worldwide. Let me give you the speaker schedule for this event. Today is day one of the program, and I am here to give the welcome notes and to give the theme analysis. Tomorrow is day two of the program, and our brother, Tob Langley, the president of World English Institute, who is going to be introduced by the founding president of World English Institute, Dr. Richard Norman Addy, will speak on sowing seeds and counting apples. That will be on May 4, 2021. The three of this program will feature our brother, Stephen Yeckley of USA, who is going to speak to us on this lesson, Be a Disciple who makes disciples, May 5, 2021. Day four of this program will feature our brother Ethan Tetz of USA, who is going to speak to us on the topic, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians chapter one, verse 21. And that will be on May 6, 2021. On the five of this program, our brother from Maiduguri Borono State here in Nigeria, Ijasini Ahanda, will speak to us on the topic, he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. On the sixth of this program, our beloved brother, Dr. Michael Grauder, USA, will speak on the topic, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John chapter 3, verse 16, and that will be on May 8th. On the last day of this program, which is Sunday, May 9, 2021, the host minister of the campus church, myself, 
and nephew of Akpan will be here to preach on the topic, the blood of the martyrs. The theme for this lecture should be a call to revisit the skills and strategies of evangelism adopted by the early Christians in a bid to repeat and improve on them using our 21st century digital technology. The manner and tempo with which the early Christians evangelized is depicted in Acts chapter 5, verse 42, where the Bible says, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. There are five salient lessons that can be deduced from this passage. Number one, the early Christians evangelized daily. Number two, the early Christians had a sense of strong corporate worship. Number three, the early Christians shared house fellowship. Number four, the early Christians studied Christ. Number five, the early Christians preached Jesus Christ. The five practical lessons from the text can be summarized as daily evangelism strategy, corporate worship example, house fellowship pattern, effective Bible study, and sound doctrine proclamation. The result of the effective evangelism approach of the early Christians is summarized in Acts chapter 2, verse, verse 47 where the Bible says, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. God added souls to the early church daily because the early Christians evangelized daily. They had no telephone like we have today. They had no mobile phones. They had no radio stations, no cable television, and no social media platforms as we have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, WhatsApp, and others today. Yet, they preached the gospel to every household, and they preached the gospel to all the world of their time. They preached daily. They preached in the sanctuary. They preached from house to house. They preached the truth. They preached Christ, not religion, not politics, not prosperity theology. They preached the Bible, not human creeds, not human inventions, and not human philosophies. The early Christians preached the gospel in the temple. They preached the gospel in the synagogues. They spread the message in people's homes. They preached on the streets. They preached in the prison yards. They preached on the beach. They preached the gospel in the palaces of the kings. They preached the gospel in the barracks to the soldiers. They even preached the gospel on transit and even before reputable governors, magistrates, and other officials. They were not afraid to share the message of, of salvation to anyone who came their way. The motive of their preaching was so that no one would perish. According to John chapter 3, verse 16, where the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Today, the motive for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in some quarters have changed. Today, founding Man-made churches is not just an easy business, but a lucrative one. However, everyone has to be warned that the church of Jesus Christ is not a marketplace. Preachers of the gospel are admonished to teach what befits sound doctrine, Titus chapter 2, verse 1. The inspired apostle Peter wrote, If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Adding to and subtracting from the word of God is a sin which has devastating consequences, according to Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. Ignorance of the truth of God's word is not an excuse for preaching falsehood. God spoke through Prophet Hosea and said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. God overlooked the times of ignorance and now commands all men every way to repent. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. The truth taught by Jesus that if the blind leads the blind, both of them shall fall into the pit, according to Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, can never be compromised. 
individuals who became the apostles and preachers of the early church received God's call to save, not in their dreams, but by listening to and hearing the voice of Jesus when he said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, verse 19. Jesus opened his mouth and taught the disciples, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 2. The disciples opened their hearts and their ears to the teachings of Jesus and even requested, Lord, teach us to pray. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. As part of their training for practical ministry, they were first sent on a limited commission to the Lordship of Israel. By the time of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, they were fully trained and entrusted with the message of salvation. This culminated in the Great Commission according to Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The ultimate aim of this digital lectureship on evangelism, I repeat for emphasis, is threefold. To persuade unbelievers to come to Jesus, to encourage and strengthen soldiers of the cross in different mission fields across the world, and to recruit new blitz of digital evangelists who would take advantage of the digital technology of the 21st century to make the gospel of Christ go viral. We pray that you will obey the voice of Jesus tonight as he calls. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You can never become a preacher of the gospel or an evangelist if you have not, first of all, followed Jesus, studied his word, to be educated his way. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman who needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Another version of the Bible says, rightly handling the word of truth. You cannot just preach anything in the name of the gospel. The gospel that we are to preach has already been enshrined in the Holy Scriptures. And we are to preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. We are to preach to the world the good news that Jesus came to save the dying world. We are to preach nothing but the truth. As the angels in heaven join us singing to encourage you, if you desire to be baptized, just make a bold step to be on your feet if you are in this hall and the ushers will attend to you. If you are joining us online and you desire to be baptized and be added to the lost body, the Church of Christ, just raise your hand or click the chat button to drop a message with your phone number, and we will make an arrangement for a preacher of the gospel of Christ in your community to get you baptized. Remember that you owe it as a responsibility to share the message of salvation to everyone. I don't know if you have come across this song before. You never mention him to me. The writer of that song is giving us a scenario whereby on the day of judgment, some people will be condemned to hellfire and others are given the green card to go to heaven. The writer says, what will happen if any dying soul on his expressway to hellfire will stop and ask a friend and say, remember, we were together. You were my friend. You were my neighbor. You were my master. We walked together. You were my classmate. But remember that you never mentioned him to me. We now see that we owe it as a responsibility to share the message of salvation to everybody in our world. I love the ways of Burton, James Burton Kaufman, who said that the highest achievement I would have made in life would be for someone to point at my grave and say, he led me to Christ. I always like to reflect on that. James Burton Kaufman, if I'm not mistaken, wrote that down. He said, the highest achievement 
that I would have made in life would be for someone to point at my grave and say, he led me to Christ. Let me give you a little story before I run up tonight. I am going to share this story with you about a man called John Newton. We all know him, the writer of the song Amazing Grace. His history has it that this man was a slave trader. And we all know what happened. And that after that experience, he became a Christian. And not just a Christian, he became a, a, a preacher of the gospel. And we are told that this man preached the gospel for 50 years in Britain. And we are told that sometime in his life, this man who was a slave trader, who now became a Christian and was a gospel preacher, remember one of his songs, Amazing Grace, that we sing often to glorify God. We are told that this man was, I mean, uh, he preached the gospel for 50 years, and then what was probably his last sermon on earth, he was being directed by a little boy as he climbed the pulpit to preach. And as he was climbing the stairs of the pulpit, he was shouting, he was shouting, Jesus Christ is wonderful. He shouted again, Jesus Christ is wonderful. He shouted again, Jesus Christ is wonderful. And the little boy that was leading him said, Sir, you have said this before, don't say it again. But we are told that John Newton, in a gentle whisper that was intended for members of the audience to hear, said to the little boy, I have said this before, and I'm going to say it again and again and again. Jesus Christ is wonderful. We are told that after that sermon, John Newton was on his sick bed in the hospital dying. And one of his best friends went to him and said, have you confessed your sins knowing that you were a great sinner? And he replied and said, yes, I know that I am a great sinner. But I do also know that I have a great Savior. My people, we have a great Savior in Jesus. Like someone has written in his book and said, no wonder they call him the Savior. Jesus Christ is the only one that is qualified to be called the Savior. Let me give you this story about a Muslim who approached a Christian preacher one day and said, you people in Christianity do not have any evidence to show that Jesus, the founder of your religion, once lived. But we in Islam, we have the tomb of Prophet Muhammad in Saudi Arabia. And we have been going there to mass round the tomb of our founder. And that is a very strong evidence that Muhammad, the founder of our religion, Islam, once lived. You go in Christianity, do not have any evidence. The gospel preacher looked at the Muslim and said, Christianity has no tomb because Christianity has no corpse. He said Christianity is not a dead religion where adherents go and mass round the tombs of the founder. He said Christianity is a living religion. Then he went on to say that Muhammad died and up till today he is still in the grave. He said Zoroaster died and up till today he is still in the grave. He said Buddha died and up till today he is still in the grave. And he said Jesus Christ died and he was buried. But on the third day he came out to life and lives forevermore. He said Christianity is a religion of the open grave. Because Jesus Christ came back to life, that gives us the hope that someday we shall meet with him and to spend life eternal. I want to share with you again a little story about a beautiful damsel in Brazil called Christina. We are told that this lady called Christina was the heartbeat of the little village in Brazil. But this girl had no education and had no occupation because the father died and she was left with the poor mother. But one day, Christina mentioned over the dining table to the mother and said, Mommy, I want to go to the city. The mother looked at Christina and said, What would this beautiful girl be doing in the city without having education and no occupation? And the mother said, Please do not go. The story says that one day when the mother came back from work, she discovered that Christina had packed all her things 
and had left the house. And Christina left a note for the mother. And the, the note read, Mommy, I'm sorry, I've gone to the city. The mother was confused. The mother gathered all the little money she had in the house, packed her luggage, and left for the city in search of Christina. Where will you start looking for a 17-year-old girl in a city of 9 million people? The mother went to all the hotels. The mother went to the nightclubs. The mother went everywhere in search of Christina, but did not see her. But the mother did one thing. She took a little picture of Christina, went to the photo studio, and had them print little copies of the picture. So everywhere the mother went, she pasted Christina's picture on the wall. We are told that after some time, the mother ran out of money and had to return to the little village without seeing Christina. Seven months after the mother left the city, Christina went to one hotel to stay. And at the reception of the hotel, Christina saw a picture on the wall. And behold, it was her own picture. Christina removed the picture and looked at it. When she turned the back side of the picture, she, she discovered that something was written there. And the mother wrote on the reverse side of the picture and said, Christina, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have gone, please come home. We are told that tears ran down her cheeks. She could not even read the mother's notes because of the tears. And Christina took a decision to go back home to the mother. This story reminds me of Jesus. And this story drives me to tell people, no matter what you have done in this life and no matter where you have gone, you can still come home to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross with open arms because he is ready to embrace anyone who comes to him. He said, come ye unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you can come to Jesus, he has never seen a sinner that he cannot forgive. Tonight, I invite you to reconcile with God through Jesus. He is the only way to God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. Place once again, as we'll be singing the song of invitation, if it has touched your heart that you need to accept Jesus Christ in your life, make a bold step to give your life to Jesus. Thank you so much for your patience. We are just starting today. And 7 p.m. Nigerian time every day from today till Sunday, we will be here to help break the bread of life to you. I'm so happy, so delighted to see the hosts of God's people gathering here tonight to listen to the gospel. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let's sing to encourage those who may want to give their lives to Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much.